doop, 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 doop. Here we go. <laughs> Just got done with another run of uh, alfalfa sprouts that have been magnetically altered. I need to talk about that, but the reason why I do this, even though I've made so many videos on magnetism and magnetic seed exposure, I confused apparently the heck out of a lot of people. I guess there were new subscribers within the past year and a half because I haven't talked about it since roughly then. But I'll explain that how to do it uh, here in just a second. But has th that, oh my God, an enormous amount of people email me, leave me comments like, how do you do it? Where do you put the magnet? What do you do? Um, but I've also, too, over the years, need to explain that a lot of skeptical, I don't care if people are skeptical, I'm not selling anything, except for like some of my leather work, I guess, um, perform this experiment, and uh, you know, they didn't think that it would work, and thousands of people literally over the years thought, wow, oh my god, it works, and it's drastic. Um, using uh, South Pole exposure for a seed germination, I've shown, and I've told other people, they don't believe me, do it yourself and have a control. I can't think of how many dozens of times I've made this experiment. It's like if you do North Pole exposure to the seeds, seed only exposure or seed and germination, which is more drastic, you know, they come out radically different. And I've done various seeds and I like to do alfalfa sprouts because it only takes a few days. These are South Pole exposed seeds. I did a seed exposure and seed during germination exposure for uh, the past six days. These are uh, five and a half days old. They grow fresher, they taste better, they smell better. And you know, I can't show you that in a video, but they do smell better. And you should never eat during a video. These are crunchy, they smell good, and they taste good. I'm gonna stick these in a salad later. This is one of the big jugs that I use uh, for uh, germination of my alfalfa seeds. There's less dead seeds. However, if the seeds are dead, it's not like the South Pole exposure is going to magically bring them back to life. But here's what you do. Um, you could do seed-only exposure. You know, if you're planting the seeds, you know, obviously, unless it's one or a few plants, which you can do also, and people have done this, um, where you place the magnet underneath the root system where the actual south side, and this isn't it. I don't want to get it too close to my computer here and uh, my camera and some other stuff. You do south pole facing towards the seed. Say this rock is the, uh, the magnet, and I use 2 inch by 2 inch by 1 inch thick. They're either in 42 gauss or in 55 gauss. You can buy them on eBay, okay? 2 inch by 2 inch by 1 inch. Don't ever use ring magnets. It'll take me like a half an hour to explain why not to use ring magnets, but don't use ring magnets. It needs to be of a sufficient size. Smaller magnets will work, but it's a bad idea. Just buy what I tell you to buy. Buy the two inch by two inch by one inch block magnets. Find the south pole of the magnet. You can use that doing a compass, a magnetic uh, uh, field finder, which most of you don't have, or I made countless videos where you actually put the magnet on a plate of oil that's slick. You shake the plate and the magnet will turn itself to the orientation relative to the Earth's magnetic field. It's like, oh, that's the south pole of the magnet. And you mark it, of course, the south pole. So for seed exposure, I'll actually um, take seeds. Of course, it depends on what type of seeds they are, how big or small they are, and roll them up into a, a, a paper tube, or you can just sit them in a, a little glass petri dish or something like that south side of the magnet facing towards the seeds, right? You know, south side facing towards the seeds. Place them on there. It's effective with as little as a half an hour to 40 minutes of exposure. Ross and Davis proved this. They tested various times of exposure. You can actually change whether the tomatoes grow, um, produce more or less acidic tomatoes. They, I would never test on animals, but they tested worms and chicken embryos. They, Every sort of seed imaginable, someone's already duplicated this experiment with, okay? So you just do seed exposure only, and you'll get drastic results. For more drastic results, like I do with my alfalfa sprouts, when I'm done actually exposing the seeds, I'll have a little uh, tray that holds the magnet, since this big jug can't sit on top of a little 2 inch by 2 inch, 1 inch magnet. South side facing up, okay? South side facing towards the seed. I'll put it on top of the magnet. And of course, you have to water your seeds every three plus hours. 
yeah, you don't have to turn it or anything like that. So the south side's facing the magnet. Um, there's a few reasons why the magnetic exposure... These smell so good, by the way. Ah, oh, hear that echo? <laughs> is, uh, look this up. Water is a polar molecule. Water is also the necessity for life to exist because without water, all living creatures are just a pile of dust. I think anybody with a half a brain knows that. Water also, too, is the polar mo molecule necessary for consciousness to exist. Water is specifically the dipole molecule. Yes, water also, too, the molecule of water, is the only incommensurable perfect geometry in the entire universe. Yes, that's the reason why I have this. It's upside down. This green triangle here. You actually take this, let me turn it this way. You take this green triangle and you make it in triplicate, it makes the Pythagorean pentagram. Yes, incommensurability. This is not my opinion or belief. This is a hardcore fact, a la the Pythagoreans. Pythagoreans considered incommensurability, and this is the only geometry of perfect incommensurability in the entire universe. The only one. And it's also, too, the same geometry of water is the secret of the Pythagoreans. Water being a polar molecule, and what's a polar object that you or I or any child might know about? A polar object. Now we have on the one hand, a polar molecule, water, which is the basis of all life and necessary for consciousness, and we have this other device, which is a polar object, a magnet. And you take a, water, a polar molecule, and you take a polar device, being the magnet, Specifically, it's a three-dimensional force vector. Explaining magnetism takes hours and hours, and I have literally, literally thousands of videos explaining that. Literally, I can say that. So I can't do that in one video. So you have polar molecule of water, and we have the polar device of the magnet, and you put two and two together, and we have magic. You remember that Jack and the Beanstalk, where you had the magic seeds? You know, it's kind of fanciful little child's fairy tale, but this is real. I literally had... Thousands of people respond to me over the years. Oh my God, I didn't believe you. It's like, it's so simple. This guy's not selling anything. I'm going to try it. You know, no one told me about this in high school or college. This is amazing. And they did it and like, oh my God, it works. It does work. Now, if these were uh, North Pole exposed seeds, and I have many videos showing that, yes, other people, you could do it yourself. The volume would be about 35% less they would actually, uh, on alfalfa seeds, this applies to any seeds or sprouts or microgreens, they wouldn't be crunchy and fluffy. They're, they would they, they look uh, darker color. They look flaccid. Yeah, I know there's a joke in there somewhere. They look uh, uh, flaccid and weak. They have a smell kind of like kerosene. It's an unmistakable. These smell exactly like the most amazing fresh uh, veggies you picked out of your garden. You know what that smells like. I hope you do anyway. And these are South Pole exposed. Like I said, there's two methodologies. Here's a drastic result, and there's a more drastic result. The drastic result is seed exposure only. You don't have to do it for very long, an hour or two. Literally, and Rawls and Davis, I don't have the time for it. I've uh, tested as long as a month and had the same results. Rawls and Davis tested for like a half a year and a year, just exposing the seeds only, and then you know, removing the exposure and then doing the experiment much further down the road time-wise. Same effect. Changes the nature of the seeds such that it absorbs and uh, applies the water to the growth and germination of the microgreens, or in this case the sprouts, to give that effect. The more drastic result is seed exposure and germination of the microgreens or the sprouts. Like I said, I don't even, I wouldn't even have to, so when you actually, uh, soak these in the water. I didn't have to do seed exposure only, um, but I do because the effect is more drastic. I just take these seeds, plop them in the jug, put my magnet, oops, put my magnet underneath the seeds. You know, of course you have to water them every three or four hours and uh, still get the same result essentially. There would be a difference, but I mean it would be almost uh, unquantifiable, I would think. I've not seen any difference. But it is more drastic if you do seed exposure and germination. To seed exposure only, there is a drastic result. So that's how you do it. Get yourself. Don't argue with me. It's like, well, someone going to use this little tiny mag? No, don't do it. Uh, you know, the magnets actually, uh, the neodymium is like a commodity, like silver. Literally, it's like silver. And it goes up and down like silver and gold does. These magnets used to be a lot more friggin' expensive. Right now, they're pretty darn cheap. 
So don't argue with me about the magnets. Like, what do I got to use this? Because you say, well, I have a refrigerator magnet. Is that going to work? It would work, but not really. If you want the result, get a 2 inch by 2 inch by 1 inch block magnet. They're either in 42 gauss, in 45 gauss. Get them on eBay. There's a guy there on Emovendo. Um, you know, they're mass produced in a couple of countries, mostly China. They're ceramic, so they will break. And I had a, a guy email me recently. He smashed, I, I don't know if he broke his finger, he smashed the hell out of his finger. They're really dangerous. If you order more than one, if you get them even close and you have your fingers in between, you're going to break your finger. And if you don't break it, you will, it will cut you like uh, someone, you know, sticking a knife in your finger. They are dangerous. You get more than one, they're dangerous, okay? You get them close together, they will snap together, and whatever is in their way, it will destroy whatever is between those two magnets, so... A two inch by two inch by one inch neodymium is a wicked beast that will hurt you. Fair warning. Be careful. I've seen people, I've handed the magnet and I warned, I was like, it's dangerous. And, you know, they get their hand near my refrigerator and it went wham. Smashed the hell out of the guy's fingers. It cut, uh, cut open one of his fingers, even though they don't have sharp edges. Anyway, that's how you do the seed exposure, uh, magnetic seed exposure. And the reason for that complicated but not really you have a polar molecule which is water the also too the only water uh, the only molecule in the universe that is capable due to its incommensurable geometry which is why i have that tattooed on the back of my hand it is the one one phi incommensurability with a cross cut and it's not really a cross cut but it's a cut at a specific angle of one over phi it is the perfect pythagorean incommensurability this is the geo and that's also too the reason why uh, the Pythagoreans called this yugata. That's the reason why I have yugata tattooed across my knuckles of my left hand. That's uh, Pythagorean perfection in harmony. Doesn't mean health. You know, a lot of foolish websites. It means health. It's like no, it means health is perfect harmony of one's body, mind, and soul, right? So you could say, well, it kind of means, but it doesn't mean health. It means uh, perfection of harmony of the incommensurability, the divine logos, if you will. And of course, explaining the divine logos would take a long time. But yeah, you were never taught this stuff in high school or college. It's very important. You take a polar device, the most primary polar, polar device in the universe, a magnet, yes? You have the incommensurable polar molecule that is water. Also, too, the only incommensurable perfection of geometry in the entire universe necessary for life and for consciousness to exist because water is the polar molecule for consciousness necessity to exist. That necessity, of course, would be a nankye. Yes, and the prohodos for the uh, consubstantiality of the two, the water and consciousness. It would be like a, uh, the antenna for a radio. You really want to, and this of course is not a seed experiment, but I wanted to attack this on the end of this video. What is Allah consciousness or, you know, um, the consubstantiality? Because this is just water and dust. Any living creature is just water and dust. Yeah, but without that water, life's not possible. But because of the incommensurability of, uh, of water and its geometry, consciousness and the consubstantiality of spirit and matter, of course, you have life. But the perfect, most perfect analogy I could think of without getting into like an hour-long explanation of the uh, incommensurability of the water molecule is that water is the dipole antenna, is literally the antenna, because I could have this radio, and I could have a battery in it, and I could turn it on, and I could have a signal out there, and this radio still isn't going to do a damn thing. But what water is, is the antenna. You know, I could have the radio, be perfectly working fine, and a battery in it, and I could have it turned on, and I could get nothing. I'm a ham radio operator, at least I used to be. Ham radio is pretty boring. I always was a big radio buff. So I could have the signal and the radio and the battery and I have the radio on. Nothing's happening. But with the antenna, it makes the two possible. And that's what water is. It's a dipole antenna of life, of consciousness. And the way you can affect that, yes, is with a polar field. Polar molecule polar object, i.e. the magnet. So this is not like pseudoscience or white lighter or mystical new age, uh, uh, what do we call it? Some people call it woo-woo. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, new age woo-woo. I am not a fan of, in no way, shape, or form, of mystical new age woo-woo. Repeat after me. Woo-woo. <laughs> it's real. It's quantifiable. 
and it's demonstrably real because anybody out there that uh, I got little alfalfa sprouts all over the table here. Here we go. I'll eat those later. Anybody that does this experiment can prove it for themselves. Don't take my word for it. Do it yourself. So, boys and girls, Damen und Herren, Frau und Mädchen, that is how you do magnetic seed exposure. And the results are radical. They're real and they're palpable. Like I said, North Pole exposure versus South Pole. You do North Pole exposure to tomato seeds or while they're germinating, you know, the little tomatoes, tomato plants growing, you will get far, far less acidic tomatoes. Tomatoes, by the very nature, are acidic. You could boost up the acidity by doing South Pole exposure. Yes? It's real. But don't take my word for it. Do the experiment yourself, okay? You do it, you'll say, Oh, God, that tattooed fat guy on YouTube was right. And I am right. God knows how many times I've done this. I just got done doing it. You see, I'm eating. You see, put your words... Uh, put your words... Uh, put, what is it? Uh, uh, what is it? Put your money where your mouth is. Well, I'm putting what I said in my mouth later. <laughs> the South Pole exposure of these alfalfa sprouts. You know, this, just like five days ago, was just a thin little layer of very tiny alfalfa seeds in the bottom of this jar. And they grow faster and quicker and better and healthier, and they taste better than North Pole exposed seeds. It, it, it looks like if I took half of these out and wilted them and, um, and uh, you know, left them to rot a little bit for a couple days, that's what the North Pole exposed seeds look like. No joke. Anyway, if I'm lying, I'm dying. Do the experiment yourself. If you like this video, any donation is always warmly welcome. Because I work seven days a week, and I have four jobs. It seems like I'm working twice as hard for half as much money. But, uh, you know, not trying to get rich. Yeah, not trying to be somebody. But I do love paying the bills. And, uh, so, anyway, do it yourself. Anyway, I had a lot of people asking me how to do this, and that's how you do it. Thanks for watching. Okay? Peace out, Girl Scout. Goodbye.